Well, hello guys and welcome back to another episode on the Saga channel. Today, today we're going to lift a small chapter out of the book Career in Scuba that I wrote um, by popular demand. Huh? Some people are wondering, is the book for me? Is it not? And by talking about a little chapter today, uh, let's say, let's call it a freebie. Uh, we're going to, um, to look a little bit closer. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about the Me Inc. diagram in the book. That's relevant for everybody who's uh, wondering how to make scuba diving as a profession uh, a little bit more lucrative or how to create a little bit more financial stability for the future. So um, if you guys like scuba diving content, make sure to subscribe and of course also hit the like button that always helps the channel in a really big way. Uh, let's do it. So chapter seven of Career in Scuba, how to become a dive instructor and be successful is titled Safeguard Your Future Visa Insurance and Retirement. It is by far the most boring uh, uh, title in all of the book, um, but it is actually very important and it is um, according to most people the reason why um, they they either don't try a career in scuba or or quit um, very soon after trying to start one and that's fair that's very fair because um, the scuba industry is a very unregulated industry um, and there are not a whole lot of mechanisms in place to safeguard your future right depending on where you work you may have some sort of um, regulation and social security, maybe a retirement plan, um, but usually incomes aren't very high and career prospects can be a little bit unclear. I think this topic is um, specifically important right now because um, a lot of people are or have lost um, their uh, job positions in the scuba industry, uh, but all the same uh, as places are trying to start to reopen and as dive centers are trying to start to uh, to, to, to restart their operations, uh, there are opportunities out there. We just finished uh, an instructor development course here in Utila in Honduras and um, we, we definitely had uh, some candidates who were working on job placement and I do also have people who are uh, ask or are asking for for job candidates so there there are places that are reopening and there is work um, but more than ever the question is well how do I how do I make sure that that me getting into scuba diving as a career is financially uh, solid and I think the best way to do that and that's also what chapter 7 uh, is is about is to run yourself as a business right we've already talked in other videos about how much scuba instructors uh, can expect to earn uh, around the world. We've talked about how to increase your uh, your scuba instructor income. We've talked about whether you should become a, um, a dive professional in the first place, whether that's a good idea for you. So I'll, I'll link all those videos below. Um, but this is very much uh, the next step, right? So once I've become a scuba professional, um, how do I make sure that this is a that that this remains financially uh, a financially sound decision? Um, and there, there's a little trick that I've been um, applying for the last five years or so. I wish I started it sooner. Um, and it's not something that I even invented. I call it the me ink. Um, it's the way most people spend their income, right? Especially in scuba diving, but literally almost in any profession is um, whatever they earn, right? Their salary or whether it's a, an accumulation of their commissions, but whatever uh, money comes in the bank, right, then goes to uh, you know food, housing, uh, other expenses, transportation, what have you, and then whatever is left over, if any, uh, is is sort of fun money, right? It's expending money, and and often people will say, well, whatever is left on top of that, I'll try to save. Um, 
that usually doesn't work. And uh, interestingly, whether you make a thousand dollars a month or you make three thousand dollars a month, that strategy never really works because you're obviously going to organize your life according to whatever comes in. And um, you know, maybe you'll upgrade your apartment, or maybe you'll um, you'll eat out a little bit more often, or you'll have a little bit more fun as your salary increases, right? And that is um, that is in essence fine if you have built-in mechanisms like retirement savings through your um, through your employer um, then maybe you can live that way and and maybe you you still can sleep at night knowing that there is a retirement uh, plan in place however for a lot of scuba instructors who also live uh, like that that is that is usually the, the the little insecurity in the back of our head that that's that's saying okay I can't keep doing this I need a plan for the future so a way that really works um, for me anyway and and for a lot of people is the me ink I call it uh, it's instead of receiving whatever uh, your income is instead of receiving that directly to you uh, I receive it to an imaginary uh, entity uh, so I call it the me ink uh, I don't recommend that you start a real company for that at least not in the beginning that's not terribly financially interesting um, and the me Inc right is responsible for uh, the expenses and I as a person I am an employee of the me Inc meaning I receive a set amount per month um, what that set amount is is based on what my rent is um, or, or my mortgage for that matter um, what transportation costs, food costs I have, and a little set amount of fun money, of course. Life has to be fun, right? Um, but Me Inc. doesn't just have me as an employee, right? Me Inc. has other expenses. Uh, if you're a scuba instructor, you usually have agency fees, you might have uh, insurance uh, costs every year, maybe there's a scuba gear allowance. Uh, so Me Inc. already knows that this is coming. But on top of that, um, I'm not the one doing the saving, right? Me Inc. is actually going to allow a certain amount each month to uh, different uh, saving projects, right? Uh, you could have a savings account. That's that's totally acceptable, of course. A good idea always to have some cash uh, on hand. Um, maybe a little stock market account, right? Maybe you're um, maybe you're gifted that way, or maybe you're just buying some. Um, some funds that are that are reasonably safe, uh, low risk uh, investments. Um, maybe you also have a little real estate account. Maybe you're slowly every month putting fifty dollars into a real estate account. Now the problem um, with this uh, is that, in, especially in the beginning, it's not particularly um, um, attractive, right? Uh, even if you do this for two or three months and you look at all your little uh, sub accounts and there's fifty dollars here and a hundred dollars there, um, it doesn't really look like you're doing a whole lot the difference is of course that um, in 10 years from now uh, you, you you will still be fine right you will have lived more or less the way you would have lived um, if, if everything were to just go to you and, and you would just spend your your money um, but the me ink will suddenly have become a, a little bit of a powerful entity um, because you in, in 10 years from now uh, is also a person, right? You will still, hopefully, you know, chances are you'll be here. And um, what what the, the real difference is between starting now and uh, or, or waiting, right, is that it's just never gonna happen. In 10 years from now, if you didn't start doing this, you're, you're still not gonna have anything. Nothing magical is gonna happen and, and just present you all of a sudden with a retirement plan or a large sum. Um, now, the most common um, rebuttal that people have is well I don't make enough anyway to give it to an imaginary me ink and then split it all out because it all has to go to me because I need all of it right um, and especially in the scuba industry people will say well there, I don't make enough there's just not there's there's just not enough high-paying jobs um, I agree 
that there are definitely uh, a lot of low paying jobs, right? But nobody is telling you to take that low paying job. So if you're making, whether it be for a little while or for a long time, a lifestyle decision where a low paying job is fine with you, then so be it. And then maybe the, the system doesn't immediately work unless you add additional income streams. Because of course, you need to find a way to make sure that the me ink is profitable right the me ink needs to be able to afford more than just my salary it does need to have funds to go to all the other projects and that's often a little bit hard because that means you'll have to do whatever it is you have to do you might have to renegotiate your current position or you might have to uh, find a different position altogether or you might have to uh, take on an additional job or an additional project right so um, one way to do that is is here I personally I have obviously the Saga website the Saga store uh, so there's a little bit of income coming from over there uh, we have Saga media so I make media projects so I have a little bit of income coming from over there but all of that income doesn't come to me right whenever I run um, uh, scuba classes that money doesn't come to me it comes to uh, the imaginary me Inc. it's actually a separate account and from there it gets split out I get an allowance or a salary <laughs> maybe sounds a bit better than an allowance I get a salary and everything else gets uh, gets divided accordingly and uh, it does take a little bit of logistics to set that up right um, some bank accounts allow you to have little sub uh, sub accounts or subdivisions. That's a great way to do it. I use an app called Revolut. Um, if it's available in your uh, country, you should look into it. It's, it allows you to create mini vaults. It basically makes your money unavailable um, to, to your card. So if, if you put it in a vault, you can't accidentally spend it. You can name the vaults. You can even put targets, uh, you know, number of targets that you want to achieve. So it's a great way of managing um, your, your financial um, wealth, let's call it. Now, right now, obviously, a lot of people have lost their scuba employment positions, right? Um, my advice has been throughout this whole crisis do whatever you have to do. If you have to go work in a grocery store for a while, there's nothing wrong with that. People work in grocery stores. Um, that is how society thrives, right? People do whatever needs to be done. So if your dream is to be a scuba instructor, maybe you got fired, you lost your job, uh, or you had to quit, and um, you have to right now do something that maybe you don't love but keeps uh, keeps you going, um, then that's that's fine and that's great. And the current crisis can actually become an opportunity because maybe you are making a little bit tiny bit more now in your non scuba uh, position than you than you were before, and it actually allows you to set up this me ink system because it doesn't need to be with scuba employment. Of course, it could be anything, right? Um, and um, that way, whenever things clear up, whenever opportunities present themselves, and if you do decide to go back into scuba, um, the system is in place because that's often the hardest part is getting the system in place, especially if you're living paycheck to paycheck and all you can, you know, maybe spare is the, the, the 50 or the hundred dollar fund money at the end of the month. Right. Um, but if you take that. You put the systems in place and split the $50 over the different pr uh, projects, let's call them. Um, the mechanism will be there. And now you can start either increasing your, um, your, your total income or you can start saving on your personal salary and find ways to live a little bit cheaper. Um, but this is, in my opinion, one of the most powerful ways to start building a little bit of security for the future, right? And um, you may not realize that right away and it may not look like it right away, but uh, give it five years, give it 10 years. I sound like a grandpa now, um, but give it some time and you will actually start seeing real results. And in the end, again, that's the whole point of retirement planning. It's not for now, it's not for right now, but we do need to basically um, deny ourselves a little bit of flexibility so that in the future, we can have a little bit more security. Um, that is what we talk about in chapter seven of Career in Scuba, how to become a dive instructor and be successful. It's a book uh, I wrote. Uh, I, I do that because um, I think there is a lot of negativity in the scuba industry. There is a lot of misinformation uh, about um, 
you know, that there's no money to be made in scuba diving. And I, I of course, agree that there are many uh, positions that aren't well paid or, you know, there are many dive centers that aren't well ran. Um, but people do love scuba diving and people are willing to spend on scuba diving and they're willing to spend for a good experience with somebody who can give them that experience or who can share interests, similar interests uh, with them. So um, Career in Scuba is written to uh, help uh, get people in the mindset of how can I get, create uh, a job opportunity for myself in this industry that is viable, that works uh, for the long term. Um, if you guys are interested, I will link the book below. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming a scuba instructor, I do run a monthly scuba instructor training uh, in the Caribbean and uh, sometimes in Spain also. Um, but that is a little bit more seasonal. Um, so definitely keep an eye on the website or just send me a message. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I'm a little bit more known for is for career guidance. So once people graduate, I do actually help uh, trying to get people uh, sorted in the industry, which is great because it creates a little network that we can then all benefit from uh, when people start looking for, for colleagues, which is already happening even now at, um, you know, having dealing with this crisis, there are still places reopening and there are still places looking for staff for good staff and for realistic and well-trained staff and I, I truly believe that uh, you know in a few months or maybe a year uh, or maybe two years right but this is gonna be over at some point and the more you do right now if this is your ambition and if you want to work in the scuba industry the more you do right now to get your ducks in a row even if in the meantime you have to work somewhere else in another industry whatever you do right now to get your ducks in a row is gonna make you so much more powerful and employable when the time comes. So guys, thank you for watching. Uh, that was my little rant about chapter seven in Career in Scuba. Uh, as always, guys, if you like scuba content, subscribe to the channel, leave us a like, a comment. I always reply and um, keep it positive, I would say. Uh, we will get through this, things will get better. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.